Hey guys, it's Walker Dival, um, author of Buy Then Build and creator of the Acquisition Lab. Uh, one of the problems that comes up when you're searching and, and looking to acquire a business is sometimes you come across um, businesses that have a certain amount of customer concentration. It's really common uh, in small to, to small to medium sized businesses to have you know one or two customers that are are significantly larger than others, right? And so how do you kind of deal with that um, in in terms of you know? Uh, uh, comfort levels and making an offer and transition, etc. And what I want to share is, is that um, it's doable. Like I actually acquired a business with uh, worth 30% of the revenue, almost 25% um, of revenue, and 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 when I eventually sold, 30% uh, of revenue was really one customer. Okay, and um, I went into it. Um, pretty confident and and um, uh, comfortable with the situation, but uh, the thing is, is that um, once I started working with that customer, um, what I found out was that he was um, what should I say? He 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 we, he spent most of his time asking me to do things that were sort of like over and above like what a normal fair business relationship would be. Uh, and so I would have to decline and then he in turn would be persistent and make me decline again. And so the majority of our um, uh, business relationship was kind of around uh, him kind of acknowledging that he had the power in the situation and me sort of letting him know that I knew he had the power in the situation. And this was how he chose to do business, right? It was a big company and, and so um, that, that was their, their culture. Um, and kind of what he was looking for in, in reciprocal. And so it made me a little uncomfortable during the time of ownership, right? Uh, and it can be a very uncomfortable situation to be in, to have, you know, essentially one person or one small group of people that make up a large amount of your revenue, especially when you're acquiring it, especially when you're acquiring it with debt, right? And you've got a monthly payment you have to make. So the way that, the way that I want you to think about this is that you know, first of all, what is customer concentration? And and, and the, the sort of rule of thumb is, you know, the question is, is there any one customer that's more than 20% um, of, of your revenue? And if so, that's usually customer concentration. Now keep in mind, you know, you could have one customer that's 19%, one customer that's, you know, 9% and one customer that's 8%. And those three are really, really important, right? And you're gonna see a lot of that when you look at these small businesses, especially in the B2B category. Um, and you have to have, have a certain level of comfort with understanding that that's kind of the profile of how these companies look. And you need to go into it comfortable knowing that you are able to manage those types of relationships and be able to execute on those, on those types of promises that your company is making. And we had a, a member in the search forum um, recently who was looking at a business that had two customers that made up over half the company. Okay, so it was quite literally each, you know, each one of these customers, if it was just the one, would have a significant amount of customer concentration. And so um, uh, she was asking me if, if you know, how, how do you deal with this is the, is the question. And the thing is, is you can deal with it, and, um, but not as much as we as buyers would like. And let me explain. When you are buying a company, you need to sort of make an offer that you're willing to make, but also one that the seller is willing to accept. Of course, right? But the thing is, is when it comes to customer concentration, it gets really tricky really quickly. And the reason why is because the minute that, that you take over the business, you are in complete control of that relationship. You are in complete control of the delivery of the product and the promises that are made and everything else. And so if, if I'm the seller and I'm selling you a company where there's two customers that you know, make up over half the business and on the first day, you know, you walk in and start, you know, using a bunch of cuss words and, and, and doing a lot of, you know, awkward things that, that are just going to um, destroy the relationship. And then you start missing ship dates because of your inability to, you know, I don't know what, tape a box, right? Or whatever. Um, obviously me as the seller, am at complete risk of the entire value of my company because you don't know how to deliver. In the same regard, if you want to keep me on board to make sure that relationship and delivery and everything is good, um, that's fine in terms of like a, 
relationship, but like I can't, and, or continuity, but I can't necessarily allow any um, financial attachment to that performance. Again, because it's no longer my company. And if I wanted to be attached to the customer, I wouldn't sell the business because that's obviously what this business is, right? So number one, you need to get comfortable with the relationship. And the way that I got comfortable going into it was that I understood that we were doing something that was very, very difficult to replace, right? It wasn't that he, he wasn't able to sort of pick up the phone and like kind of have another, another solution by Friday kind of a thing. And so, and, and what made it more interesting is that um, we took care of a huge volume of products that were actually really low dollar amounts, okay? So in other words, if we weren't in place, then there was going to be a lot of headaches none of which on an individual basis were, were really worth anyone's time to take care of. And yet we sort of would, would just sort of make that, you know, uh, go away and, 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 and managed well and centralized. And uh, so, so I went into it knowing that, you know, as long as the relationship was okay, as long as we were able to do what we said we were gonna do, as long as we were able to sort of like respond to problems quickly, I mean, these are the things that make for, you know, good relationships, right? And, and business relationships and understanding what are the most important things that need to happen and make sure that we, that we always get those things right, okay? Um, uh, and so that's what gave me confidence in this situation. So if you're looking at a business that happens to have customer concentration, uh, what I want you to do is ask yourself, how easy are you to replace, okay? And if it's, if it's really simple, then yes, you should be concerned. If it's really difficult or medium difficult, then, you know, like me, you can be comfortable going in and then sort of get, get kind of uncomfortable uh, once you get into the relationship and find out it's not exactly how you like to, how, how you like to work. Um, and so the way that you structure, you know, customer concentration in a transaction is not on an earnout, which is where all of us as, as buyers are gonna go to, right? Like we all want an earnout because we don't know what, the, what that person's going on, on go, you know, what that person, what's going on in their mind, or maybe the, maybe we suspect a seller's selling because one of those customers is leaving or something like that, right? And so we wanna go to an earnout, but they can't really accept that because you are the one with all of the control and all of the power and really in charge of the relationship the minute after they walk out the door is the seller, okay? So, so they're unable to really accept that. And so the way that this usually comes down, obviously you have to work out a transition plan that makes sense, you know, introductions and so on and so forth. But the way that it usually gets measured out is actually just in the valuation of the business, right? So in other words, if you have complete customer diversification in your business and you go to sell, you are going to be able to get the highest price in that category. Um, if I'm selling, you know, a million dollars worth of stuff, but I have one customer, okay? Well, I'm really selling a customer, not a business in that example. So let's, you know, let's make it a little different. Like, let's say I've got a hundred customers, but you know, one of them is, is, is 20, 25% of the business. Uh, there's some concentration there. And so you, what you really need to do is understand how it impacts the value of the company. So again, it's still going to be cash at close in most cases. It's just that it's not this much cash, cash at close. It's this much cash at close. And even this is still going to be a big dollar amount, maybe the most expensive purchase you've ever made in your life. And so you really need to get comfortable, not with um, uh, uh, trying to tie the seller to the business in this instance, as much as getting comfortable with be, being confident in your ability uh, to, to manage a customer and to um, uh, make sure that, that, that you can do uh, for them what, what's needed to be done and, and that, um, that, that you're hard to replace or at least mid-hard mid to replace, right? The other thing I'd look at is just sort of a diligence item, which is, um, you know, look in, you know, start to ask them about their relationships and try to figure out like, is this someone that, you know, they go to temple with or church with, or do they go on, you know, ski trips with their family? I mean, you know, what is the personal relationships uh, between the the seller and um, these specific buyers that make up a large amount of, of um, revenue, okay? So uh, that's how you deal with customer concentration. We don't always love it, but the thing is, is that like, if you can't get comfortable with it, move on because that is a risk uh, in terms of, of completing an acquisition. Um, at the acquisition lab, we do 
world-class instruction. Uh, it's a vetted membership uh, group of buyers of people looking to acquire a business in the next 12 months. Um, and um, uh, looking forward to uh, having you apply for this program if in fact you are uh, looking to buy a business in the next 12 months. Thanks so much.